A, to educate members of the public uh, about some problems that I have personally had with the court system, uh, along with countless other members of the public that I have been able to meet out here. Um, what I am doing out here is concerted protective activity. Um, it is not wrong. I'm exercising my First Amendment right. More people from the public uh, need to do what I'm doing. Um, but the problem is, is the pushback from law enforcement and also our court system. I have been harassed. I have been detained. I have been arrested. I have been uh, attempted to be prosecuted, a malicious prosecution. Uh, multiple times I've had a jury trial, um, all involving me exercising my First Amendment right. Um, and what our court system here is trying to do is they're trying to shut down members of the public from interacting with each other, sharing their experiences, and this goes all the way to putting anything online. Um, in certain um, DD orders, the language of the actual, even if it's civil or peaceful restraining order or a, a more advanced restraining order, it has language in there that pertains to um, electronic harassment, um, and they're using that tool right there to charge people with contempt charges for uh, exercising their First Amendment right. I have every right to be out here discussing my bad run-ins with a Santa Clara County judge. Although Judge Jeremiah Stupid Scott does not appreciate what I'm out here doing, countless other members of the public do. And this guy, if you look online and you look up his information, he's already been turned into the California Judicial Performance Review Board. He was publicly obnonished. And he should have just been publicly thrown off the bench. Um, this guy took a uh, deputy district attorney, uh, Kelly Meeker, into closed chambers and basically banged her out on his desk. <clears throat> and he was able to uh, um, get away with this. They basically wrote that he just had a private meeting, and, and that's not what happened. I mean, this guy has been sexually harassing women in Santa Clara County for most of his career. Um, he was with the DA's uh, office. He was just wrecking shop there. Um, you know, intimidating people, sexually harassing women, and, and not to mention so many of his cases now are being uh, turned over in appellate courts um, for him fabricating evidence um, you know, on the stand. It, it's just horrible. This guy should have never made it to the point of having a judicial robe, and now look what we've created. And I would hope sooner or later that these complaints would, uh, would go through properly um, but it's just a failed institution there. The oversight for our courts is basically non-existent. It hasn't been audited in its entire life. And, and, and now that it will, the courts and the judges are trying to block this, uh, this movement right here. So not only are you blocking the ability to turn in a judge or complain about a judge, um, you, our county is also not stepping up to the plate with what they should be doing. Uh, judge Jeremiah Stewart Scott is, is basically Harvey Weinstein with a judicial robe on. This guy goes ahead and he combs the court clerk's office down there for the wounded gazelles. He's down there hitting on women down there, and he's just a dirty dog. It just makes you cringe that judges like this exist, and he's abusing his judicial power. And, and it's not the first time this has happened. There's countless times more people are coming forward, but the problem is, is they're being intimidated and harassed for coming forward about what's been going on. So what we're seeing right here is a big cover-up. And, and this guy, um, he was seeing criminal court cases, and then after his run-in with uh, D.A. Meeker in closed chambers, uh, the public defender's office ended up papering him. So basically he got booted out of that. He got sent down to traffic court, seeing pro temp stuff, you know. And, and, and then now he has re-emerged in family court. Well, my original court appearance with him was off of uh, Park Avenue. And uh, what we've done with that judge now is we just keep, you know, promoting him in a way. We've now put him in this new, nice, shiny courthouse, and he's just in here to wreck lives. He's just, and, and it's sad. He should have been ran out immediately when he was, uh, when he was uh, turned into the California Judicial Performance Review Board. And that's not what happened. They just gave him a little tap on his hand and rewarded him with a brand new shiny courtroom. And how is that even possible? And, and knowing that this guy is just a dirty dog, and what I'm really concerned about is why you other judges down here are not breaking this guy's balls. Why you're not on top of this guy saying, look, bud, you're a new judge and you're really making us look bad. You know what I'm saying? Keep it in your pants, bud. That's inappropriate work. Don't be dipping your pen in the company ink. 
I mean, somebody needs to do something about this guy. And if, when waiting for the proper complaints to go through and something to be done is like watching grass grow. So we need you other judges to start stepping up to the plate to regulate this guy. Or he's just going to keep getting away with the dirty deeds he's been doing. Um, I, I had a horrible run-in with him. I inquired at the courthouse how to file a judicial ethics complaint against him, which every member of the public has the right to do that with a judge. When that information got back through the bailiffs, which, let's be honest, when those little snitches went and told the judge, he went and sent multiple Santa Clara County Sheriff's deputies out to my home in Santa Clara, where I take care of my grandmother, 87 years old, to harass and intimidate me. And fortunately enough, I was able to record the interaction, um, but, but that should never happen right there. Okay, just because I was inquiring about filing a complaint against him. And even if I go back to the courthouse or I go into courtrooms to do my research, I'm in and out of this place all the time. I have every right to be here. I have every right to sit in court proceedings here. And I, and I also have the right not to be harassed or intimidated. And that's coming from a lot of the sheriff's deputies that are handling the security here. I, you know, as a member of the public, I should not be stared at in line like, like, like these people want to fight. I mean, it, it, it's pathetic. They should not spend long periods of time digging through binders and backpacks just to hold me up in line. And then they don't want to let me bring in my backpack and binders. It's, it's just nothing is consistent, and the harassment is pathetic. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a nice lady that I met out here in front of the courthouse. She's been helping me look up my family court case file because I'm not familiar with this whole system here and part of her helping me in that clerk's office um, she was able to witness the harassment witness the intimidation and when she pulled out her phone as her right as a journalist uh, they ended up snapping and breaking her hand to get her phone and it was just unacceptable it was harassment and and these bailiffs that are causing these problems, these sheriff's deputies, were not even taken off of that line there. They weren't even taken out of having to deal with the public. Um, you know what I think? They should have been put on leave. Uh, even if it was paid leave, you get these bad apples out and you start figuring out the problems. We've already had enough issues with our Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department, including our Department of Corrections. I have been actively involved in all of the jail reform every single thing, including the audits for our Sheriff's Department, and we have left out a section here, which is the bailiffs, okay, and, and, and what judges are doing using these bailiffs to intimidate the public. So we need to stop this from happening, and this has been brought up at, the, at a supervisor level, and, and hopefully the county gets involved with this stuff and we can stop these things from happening. The, uh, some of these bailiffs, and, and I support, but I want everybody to understand, I do support our Sheriff's Department. I just don't support the bad apples that are in there. And there's several of you bailiffs that are here, probably three or four of the old timers, that are absolute douchebags, okay? Maybe early retirement. Maybe you could just go, you know, hand out playing cards somewhere or go hold up a crosswalk stop sign. There has to be something else you can go do because you have no customer service skills. You're there to intimidate people. You're pissed off. I don't know why, but you're just bitter. And those are people that we do not need in customer service. We need people that understand the public, people that have had the problem proper crisis intervention training uh, to be able to handle the public. These are hard places to be at, and especially at family court. And, and they need to learn how to have that softer approach with the public that they just don't have. And, and, and if somebody doesn't get along with the judge and no crime has been committed, it, it's unacceptable for them to use the sheriff's department as that long arm of the judicial bench just to harass people. And that's just like what Stewie does. Stewie likes to intimidate and harass the public. And that's just his M.O. Oh, not to mention everything that he does down in that clerk's office. This guy is a snake oil salesman. You other judges need to start regulating, regulating him until these complaints come through when he gets thrown off the bench. Okay? He needs to go. It's time for him to kick rocks. And that's why I'm out here educating members of the public and making sure to keep this system accountable to the American public. And what I'm doing out here is concerted protective activity. The harassment needs to stop. Serving people with fictitious orders out here and saying they can't exercise their First Amendment rights is wrong. That's unconstitutional. More than that, it's constitutionally offensive. I have every right to be out here. 
Stop harassing me with bailiffs. Stop harassing me with sheriff's deputies. Stop harassing me with court staff. It is unacceptable. And then when you guys can't handle your own crap, you then want to call the San Jose Police Department trying to shut me down. Then you want to contact a park ranger to try to shut me down. It's like, my God, you want to prevent members of the public from educating people about about bad judges, about sexual predators like Stewie Scott? I mean, come on. This is what we have to do when the system has failed us. Okay? And we've got to keep this guy away from these women. Okay? He needs it. I mean, there should just be a rule for Stewie that he can't go hit on the wounded gazelles in the clerk's office. There's no reason he needs to be down there. And I feel so bad for the court reporters that have to go through there or any of the staff. It's just really, really sad to deal with. So, again, Scott Largent, I would love to speak from any other member of the public. Well, we put together quite a group of people. Um, and, and it's a good to have that type of support, and it's good to be able to share our experiences, figure out a different game plan, figure out what we can do to help each other, and what we can do to fix this toilet here. Because this isn't working good for the American public. And we spent all this money, I don't know, was $190 million building this courthouse right here, and the hours are cut in half. People have to wait in line for four or five hours. Nothing's getting done properly, yet we have a shiny building like this. What a failure. What an absolute failure. And then the other thing is, we're rewarding bad judges and giving them brand new courtrooms. And that's just unacceptable. So again, Scott Largent, I have some great literature and stuff that kind of gets people up to speed on what Stewie's been doing. And, um, you know, hopefully this can help some other people out. I'm not out here to give legal advice, but um, in my situation, I wish I would have refused him as a judge. And I really wish the public defender's office would have given me the 411 to say, Hey, Scott, we've got this judge that was in criminal, and now he's in family wrecking lives. You know, if they would have given me that 411, I would have recused him in a heartbeat. I would not have wanted to deal with a judge like that. Um, but they just sent me in there. They just sent me in there for the slaughter. So it's just a sad thing. Again, Scott Largent, uh, if you don't feel like coming up and talking, my phone number, 408. 426475 and I appreciate all the uh, all the positive feedback and I uh, hope everybody has a happy holiday thank you